Carburetor. EFI. Carburetor. EFI. Carburetor. EFI. Carburetor. EFI. EFI. Let's just agree to disagree. Okay. That was easy. Wait a minute. We need to talk about this. Seriously, you gotta you, you come back because we need nope. to. We, nope. I want to discuss this. Not today. But why? I got things to do. I'm not gonna say what you are, but it has ick in the middle of it. This might be accurate. I don't know what to do now. Thank you. Carburetor. Yeah, I'll let that slide. <laughs> I know that discussion is not popular in our yes. society not, today. Not right now, no. <laughs> but I'd like to have a discussion on carburetor versus EFI, because some of the things that I found out mm -hmm. in doing the research for this honestly make me understand why people do EFI over a carburetor. Yes. Even it, though it's a lot more expensive. A lot more Like expensive. double, not double, but half again e as much money. I mean, you know, you, you're looking at a difference of about $1,000 for a carburetor setup, brand mm -hmm. new, yeah, as opposed to $2,000 for an EFI. And there are even EFI systems that are even more than that. Oh, yeah. We're just going to, for, for argument's sake today, we're going to talk about the Sniper EFI. Yeah, typical TBI carburetor replacement style. Because that's what a lot of guys in this market are doing. And it's easy enough to do. You put a new intake manifold on it. You put the Sniper system on yep. there. And then it kind of degrades downhill from there financially. <laughs> I'm not, I am not. Please don't misunderstand me. I like the Sniper EFI system. I think it and others like it are good systems. Uh, the problem you run into is just the financial side mm -hmm. of it. And that's really my biggest complaint about it. Uh, after I did the research, it made me think about that a little bit more. So what we're going to do is I'm going I'm to line out for you here. I'm going to show you some photographs of stuff, and I'm going to line out the two systems that we're talking about. Now, number one is going to be the Sniper EFI. It lists out around $1,200. Now, we're talking about the 550-516 system. That's their basic self-tuning uh, fuel injection system they've been selling for a good while now. If that's a basic system. It doesn't have the pump with it. It doesn't have a fuel tank and all that. You're going to have to source that from somewhere. And so what I would say is, is if you're running a mainstream car, like a Camaro, a Mustang, a Cougar, because the tanks are the same on those, Firebird, same with the Camaro, the pumps are the same, or the tanks are the same. Chevelle, any of those big market cars like that, Holly offers an in-tank pump system that you can just bolt right up underneath the car and you're set and ready to go. Uh, but it is $619, and they don't care if you got a Ford or a Chevrolet. So you're not saving any money they're, they're proud by having, of that. <laughs> yeah, you're not saving any money by having a Chevrolet at this. And they say that you can run that as a returnless system, but yeah. I have seen too many people say it just works better with a return. Yeah, it does. It was, because then you have constant fuel flow and you don't have vapor lock issues. And the funny thing about it that I saw is their in-tank pump, mm -hmm. it's got a return. Yep. <laughs> now, also what you're going to want to do with that system is you're going to want to upgrade your fuel line. You'll either need to go with the, the provided line from the guys at Holly. They give you about 20 foot of line with the kit. If you're going to do a return system, you'll probably need a little bit more than that. Uh, so you want to get some to finish out it and, and make it run back with their hose. You can also do what we would prefer to do, and that is to go in and use either the mild steel or the stainless. And I like stainless because it's a little harder to, to do the, the ferruled ends on it. But, but it you, pretty. It's and just it, really pretty. And it doesn't rust. You don't have to worry about it. It's done. Yeah, you, you're one and done with yeah. it. You got for it in there. For your lifetime of the car, it's done. Yeah, you're not going to have to worry about it. So you go in and you, and you set up flare fittings on both ends of the system yep. in all the different places. And then you have a, a system that you can take it apart mm -hmm. using, you know, and you can just do a single flare so where you can go to an AM style line. Exactly. And so then you're all set up and ready to go. You don't have to really worry about anything. And plus, like you said, it's really pretty. Yeah. Now, NPD has the stainless line for about 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's really not that bad anymore. No. I mean, a lot of guys think you're going to be paying thousands of dollars for stainless, but you're only looking at about 100 bucks from National Parts Depot yeah. for any of the different ones that you want to get, Camaro, Mustang, whatever that they stock. Yeah. Again, we're talking about major market cars. We're not getting off into Torino's. Uh, and some of the other big car stuff that you might want to put the system in. You know, and then also you're going to want 
to have the bungs welded on the exhaust pipes. A lot of guys don't think about it. They provide you yeah. with the bung. Got to have them welded on. But you got to have them welded on. They have the clamp on ones. <laughs> Don't work that well. I yeah, they, I think they even include clamps possibly yeah. for that with so, the sniper system. Just get it welded. Just get it welded. It's really going to be much better. So you're looking at anywhere from pizza and beer for your buddy to come over and weld them on. Mm -hmm. If he welds like I do, take it to a shop. Not enough pizza to afford not that. Enough pizza. <laughs> He, he, he can't, no. <laughs> anyway, so you want to do that or you want to take it to an exhaust shop and have them weld the bungs on for you. You can use the bungs that they provide or you can get the ones that are inserts that are possibly maybe a little easier mm -hmm. for the exhaust shop to weld on. Let him make that determination for you when you do it. You're probably looking at about a hundred bucks maybe to weld yeah, those in. Maybe. Uh, and I don't know, these are all, that kind of cost is something that's going to be subjective to your area where you live. And you'll have uh, about $150 in miscellaneous BS that you're going to have to buy. That does probably account for some pizza, some beer, and your buddy's coming over and helping you put the system in the car. Uh, usually it's just one guy, so it's enough pizza for two. So you're looking at about $150. Bucks, cause and we, with the Holly, you don't need one, but a laptop is a very good... It yeah. is a very good... because You it can does, do everything through the handheld. You, you, you can get all the self-tuning, but if you actually want to tune it yourself, you really want a laptop. And that's something we may get off into in another video and yeah. talk to guys about that. Uh, but right now, we're looking at, without the laptop, we're looking at mm -hmm. about $2,000 for a Holly system. Yeah. So, on the basic flush of it, that's a holy crap number. <laughs> Compared to a carburetor, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm going to talk about carburetors next. Let's just say, right at the front, it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. You're, at the most, you're probably going to spend about $1,000, and I could probably bring it down to around 800 bucks if I go in and I use intake manifolds from the speed shops. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them now have their own intake manifolds that are probably made, being made by somebody else. Yeah. But they're yeah. out there and they have them. And they all do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I think Speedway has one that's like $180 for a Chevy small block. Yeah, and or go to a swap meet and get one for 50 bucks. Yeah, so I mean, you're going to have an intake manifold, but let's just say you have a brand new yeah. intake manifold. So your intake manifold is not really in the discussion because you're going to have an intake manifold either way. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's, it's cheap. Uh, carburation is kind of funny because I didn't anticipate it being as different as it is. I mean, there's a $100 difference between the two big players in the carburetor field. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people making carburetors out there for these classic cars, but you're looking at about mm, 520 bucks for a Holley and about 420 bucks for an Edelbrock. Yep. I know. There's guys that are going to tell me Edelbrock's the best carburetor in the world, and they're a great carburetor. I just don't know how to tune them. It's the only reason I don't use Edelbrock's, okay? So if you want to talk about Edelbrock's, leave a comment in the section below. Let me know what you think about it. But I'm going to tell you, if I'm going to tune a carburetor, it's going to be a Holly, because I've been tuning them for 30 plus years. Um, you're looking at like 520, 420 for the carburetor. Good quality fuel pump. We're talking about a really good fuel pump, about 80 bucks. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can get a standard carter, which will probably work fine for most applications, and they're running around 40 bucks. Yeah. But a good high-end carter that's a full-spec carter for, for performance, you're going to be about 80 bucks. 80 to 85 bucks. For, let's say 80 bucks. Compared, we'll throw cash at yeah. it. Compared to a brushless electric fuel pump for 60 psi, which typically like runs like $300. We're going to throw cash at yeah. it on the, on the carburetor <laughs> side and spend 85 yeah. bucks. Get the good stuff. Get the good stuff. Another set of fuel lines, just to, just to make things yep. even, we're going to put a $100 set of fuel lines on it. And then um, you're going to, this is where we start getting into the sticky points because you're going to have to have a tuning kit. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you do. If you don't buy a tuning kit with it, you're actually just robbing yourself. Yeah. Because I've never had an application where I'm like, right, right out of the box, it runs perfectly. Yeah. They'll, they'll, run, they'll okay. run They'll run, but rarely perfectly. So you will probably want to get a tuning kit for this thing to uh, get it to where you can hone it right in. You're going to need to know what carburetor you want to put on the car. Yep. And when you need to know that, you're going to have to figure that out. So you're going to mm -hmm. go out. Now, there's a calculator you can get online to calculate what your CFM needs to be for your carburetor. And it goes off of volumetric efficiency, really. I mean, that's the bottom line on it. And so you're going for an 85% volumetric efficiency. And by the way, you're never going to get 85% volumetric efficiency. On Most the internals use like 75%. 70 to 75 percent efficiency. So if you're looking at 75 percent efficiency, that's great. So you go out and it says you need a 507 mm -hmm. for a 350. You need a 517 CFM carburetor, but that's not really true. <laughs> at least by my personal experience, it's not really true because what ends up happening is, is every time I've ever done that, and we put an engine on the dyno, mm -hmm. 
even if the carburetor is all tuned in and ready to rock and roll, you put the 517 CFM carburetor on there and it pulls great numbers. But if you pull a 617 CFM carburetor, put it on there with all the great tuning on it, your numbers go up. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, that's as with a max performance pull. In other words, you're going and putting as much stress on that engine as you possibly can on the dyno in order to see where you're at. The other side of that is this, is once you get that carburetor out on the street, it's going to change mm -hmm. things. And you're going to have to have a tuning kit in order to make that work. And the worst part about a tuning kit is, you need to understand much, much more about how your engine operates in order to run that tuning kit. Yeah, you have to know how to use the tuning kit. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, that's the real problem is you get a bunch of jets and you get some gaskets and stuff and some power valves or you know mm -hmm. different metering rods with an Edelbrock if you're using an Edelbrock. What does it all mean? But what does it mean? Yeah. And This one's five inches. <laughs> what, what does, does that, that mean? mean? So you have to know. Now, the, admittedly, there are videos out there that will teach you mm -hmm. everything you need to know from Edelbrocks to Hollies about tuning a carburetor in. Yep. But that's going to require research, and I think that's why the EFI thing has took off. Mm -hmm. So most people are experienced with EFI. Yeah, pretty much anybody past, I'd say, 20 years old now. Most I would of, even go as high as 40 probably. It's yeah. EFI is a normal thing yeah. for them to be experienced with. Majority of people, they have never owned a carbureted car. No, and they don't know. And I mean, they look at it, it's a big mystery box that sits on yeah. top of an intake manifold. I mean, I have a friend who basically sat there one day and said, what's a carburetor? Mm -hmm. Now he's taking a picture of the carburetor. <laughs> what this? He don't know what it is. <laughs> What'd it be? Um, so I think that what happens is, is that people are willing to trade money for ease. For ease. Mm -hmm. Because with the EFI system, you're not going to have to worry about having a tuning kit on board. You're not going to have to worry about reading plugs. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have to worry about all that other fiddly crap that you have to do with a carbureted engine. And as long as it's working right, it just it does works. Its thing. Yeah. And realistically, I mean, if you have your timing set correctly and all that, and you can even buy kits mm -hmm. from Holly that, that have the distributor yeah, the that's dual. tied into the carburetor in the computer. Yep. Once you get a dual, uh, dual sync with a Holly, it runs cam crank sensor out of the dual sync, and you have full time and curve control. So you don't need to do anything. Yeah, and then you can also go to an LS coil pack style as well. So you don't have to really do anything. Yeah. No, fancy. I mean, part of me actually likes the process of tuning a carburetor, yes. but there are so many people that are intimidated by that little box on top of the <laughs> intake manifold that I think that's where the biggest boost that the EFI community has seen yeah. is at, mm. is these guys go, man, I don't want to deal with that. What do you mean air going past that little ring makes fuel come out? <laughs> what are you telling me? That that little vacuum thing in there, <laughs> what does a power valve yeah. do? It was a vacuum signal. Well, you know, and so they I don't- I don't have any signal here. <laughs> Hold up their mobile phone. <laughs> what do you mean signal? I got signal, look at that, four bars. So I mean, I think that that's really the bottom line. I think the bottom line is that the guys just want to be able to fire and forget. Mm -hmm. The and EFI in the winter time, you know, if you if you razor edge tune your carburetor, do it correctly. Yes, you will have to tune it every season. You tune you tune it to the seasons. You yep. go in and you do a set of points if you have points in the car. Mm -hmm. so I know 99% of you guys are probably running a Petronix or something similar, but if you have a uh, uh, you know, a, a point system, you go and you check your points at the fall season, you change your jetting a little bit, and you screw around with it. You know, I don't know, I guess it kind of harkens back to the 60s of a guy standing around with a Marlboro hung out of his mouth and a t-shirt <laughs> with a pack of cigarettes rolled up in his sleeve. Mm -hmm. Working with fuel, that's the smart thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why your granddaddy bald. <laughs> And I mean, I think that I like that. I, I personally like the, the aspects of it, but it also is annoying as crap. Yes. The simplicity of a carburetor is wonderful, but the nuance of having to constantly adjust it. But is it really simple? It's simple if you understand it. If, right. If you, That's if the if boil can, down yeah. matter in it. Because you have to know, the, you have to do the research. You have to go out and look at things. You have to go out and make sure... You know, you have to know the whole yeah. of your engine. You have to understand the jetting of it, what each jet does, when the fuel comes in each jet. Like on um, Edelbrocks, the metering rods, you can tune when the engine gets fuel based on vacuum. Same with power valves. They're, they're, but you have to know the nuances of that and yeah. what the operational and, system is. In other words, what's going on? What are you planning to do? It's like what I always talk about, the 90, what's the 90% yeah. of the car? If you're going down the quarter mile, you really don't need a vacuum advance because you're always on the floor. Yeah. 
but you'll also tune your carburetor different if you're going to do a mm -hmm. quarter mile at a time as opposed to if you're driving it every day on the street, yep. which you'll want a vacuum can on the distributor and you'll want the carburetor tuned for street use. Yep, and you'll actually want to drive it with a vacuum gauge on it to see what your normal cruising vacuum is. Because like So I'm, you'll know what the power valve needs yeah, to be set at. Because if you step into it to pass somebody and you hit five inches of vacuum and your power valve's not coming on, that's a problem. And you'll know yeah. as soon as you do that. But I think that's what causes the EFI thing to be great. And one of the reasons that I'm kind of leaning toward EFI, like on our 64 Falcon with the 347 small block, mm -hmm. we are hoping to put power adder. Uh, yeah, a power adder. We're going to put a 174 wind supercharger on it because mm -hmm. we can actually get it to fit underneath the hood <laughs> without actually cutting into the hood because it's got a lot of depth in mm -hmm. there on the Falcons. Um, so we want to put the supercharger on there. Yep. And for power adders or anything like that, uh, Holly's the way. E EFI is the way to go. EFI is the way to go because then you've got, a, I don't have to want to learn a whole new tuning set. Yep. I know how to do naturally aspirated and I don't want to jack with trying to figure out how to learn how to tune for a supercharger. Mm -hmm. Plus there's other issues at bay on that too because whenever you start doing a power adder like that, the EFI can learn about how it runs and lean or enrich in the mixture as mm -hmm. it needs as opposed to the carburetor, which is dumb as a box of rocks. Yeah, it, it's a line. You get fuel with air. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you happen to lean out because yeah. you're on a really cold night and everything's working right and it's, yep. it's got that moment where it's doing great and then all of a sudden it's not. Yeah. And then you blow the engine up because you don't have enough fuel going in because you're detonating the piston, mm -hmm. pistons. So I think that if you have the money, I would say, and if you don't want to have the learning curve, EFI yeah. is the way to go, Yeah. bottom line. If you want a simple, dead nuts, reliable car, carburetor is pretty good, but you have to be able to learn how to tune it. And that's it. Do you want to have that desire for that skill set? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, it is indeed a skill set. There are a lot of people who will put a carburetor on a car and they'll fire and forget and then they'll bitch about it the entire time they're driving or they pull yep. into the cruise night and the car's so bloody rich, <laughs> it burns your eyes when it goes past. You fire up and there's a cloud of smoke out the back. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and they never fix it, but they always sit around bitching about the carburetor. Yep. If you learn how to tune a carburetor, it's kind of like having a trailer, because mm -hmm. everybody's going to want to come over and have you work on yep. it. <laughs> like they want to come over and borrow your trailer, mm -hmm. they'll want you to work on their carburetor yep. because you know how to mess with it. Um, and so that's something to consider too. I mean, maybe it's a side job for you, a little bit of side hustle as people <laughs> say today. You know, hey man, I can tune your carburetor because now I know how to mess with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, from my personal experience, like I said, I'll stay with carburetors on most of what we have around here. The Falcon, I am definitely going over to the EFI system yeah. if we can get into it with the supercharger. If we stay naturally aspirated, carburetor. I'll probably put a 670 Holly mm -hmm. on there and be done with it and run it because I'll know how to tune it out. Yeah. See, I like both. The EFI allows you to do so much more, but carburetors are so simple. Like if you run a sniper EFI system, if you have a fuel injector clogged, you're pretty much done. Like you can't pull, to my knowledge, you can't pull the fuel injectors out on the side of the road. Right, with, with it's not like, yeah. With a carburetor, you can go to O'Reilly's and get a rebuild kit <clears throat> for 20 bucks. And yeah, you can get a rebuild kit, or you can have your tuning kit in the trunk of the car yep. when you're going to a car show and everything's in a box about that big yep. that you can pull out of there and put new jets in it if you need to, or just pull the carburetor down, spray some carburetor choke cleaner in there and clean it out. Bada bing, bada boom, you're finished. Yep. Of course, if you got the right fuel filter on it, you shouldn't be having these issues anyway. That's a whole nother video though. <laughs> like doing when they did the EFI on that black car where they <laughs> put the fuel filter after the pump. <laughs> yeah. Stupid people. All right, so what we really wanted to do today was just basically break that down for you. Cam and I have talked about this a good bit off yep. camera. Uh, I have always argued the point of carburation until today. <laughs> When I realized why it's happening mm -hmm. and why there's so much EFI stuff available out there on the market now. Uh, so it's just easy. It's just easy. I mean, realistically, that's what it is. It boils down to everybody wanting to be able to do other things and yep. quickly. Not, not have to worry about the carburetor. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, it makes sense to me because, like I said, with the I'm that way about learning carburation with yep. superchargers. Yeah. I don't want to have no, to do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> so what a, am I going to do? I'm going to put an EFI on it. That's a very possible, really expensive learning curve to mess up <laughs> Yeah, on. really throw the money at it. <laughs> um, do me a favor, folks. Go out and check out our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me, with other people on Zoom. It's a lot of fun. We have a ball. I do tech Q&A with everybody. 
Uh, also, we put out now a video a month specifically for our Patreon members. Those guys are putting their money where their mouth is, so they get a tech video every month that's just for them. Uh, but we're not doing anything to slow down what we do around here on a normal basis with our rest mod and Manic Mechanic. Those videos still go out every week-ish, because right now we are fighting the battle of trying to put a building up and trying to finish a building and getting the house where we're living now uh, in a working condition. Also, subscribe to the channel right now. The algorithms are working against small channels like us. So join the rebellion <laughs> and go in out and subscribe to the channel because then you'll be notified every time we put a video up. Even people as big as Peter McKinnon, which he's a guy I follow uh, that does uh, stuff on cameras and things like that. Even he is experiencing a slack off on his subscriptions mostly due to the way they've changed the algorithms. And he's up in the million viewer mark, over a million. I don't remember where he's at now, but he's a lot of viewers. And he's experiencing this as well. So if it's happening to guys as big as him, you know it's happening to guys as little as us. So subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notification, and you'll be able to know what's going on every time we put a video up. And that's gonna be you know, twice a week. Finally, folks and all, be good to each other, be kind to each other, love each other. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. I just can't believe I've fallen down into that <laughs> pit. I of... finally talked to you in this. <laughs> actually, the 347 and the supercharger kind of talked yeah. me into it. I actually talked myself into it, if you really want that. You start watching YouTube videos of lean pops with superchargers. <laughs> 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 Look, there's 347 <laughs> there, and there, and there. <laughs> they start planting them, and they start growing. <laughs> <laughs> little Tweety and I go, boop. Whoa, look at the little Tweety and I. <laughs> okay, folks. Later. <laughs>